Hey guys, I want to show you how to do CRUD operations with Typeform. To do this, I set up a GraphQL schema already with the queries and mutations that you would expect when wanting to do a CRUD operation on a type. So the type I have is user, which matches the entity that we created in the last video. Now I'm going to be querying a single user, multiple users, and then creating, updating, and deleting users. So what we're going to do is fill out the resolvers for these and how to do it with Typeform. Now before I begin, I want to do one quick thing with TypeScript that will make our life a little bit easier. So right now, I have to specify the types because of the way I set up TypeScript of the parameters of the function. So if I were to say parent args context info, and then let's just say I return an empty object. It doesn't like it because it didn't specify the type. And I can have any, any, and I could go through and specify any for each one. But I don't want to do that for each mutation, each query, right? So one thing I could do is if I was feeling lazy, I could just say the type of this is any, and then we don't even have to worry about this, I don't think. And actually, I was thinking this would work, but I didn't want to do it, and it doesn't work anyway. So how I usually do it, which I like much better, is to just create a type for the resolver. So we're going to create a folder called types, and I'm just going to gradually add types to this. So I'm going to create a resolver type.ts, and I'm going to say export type resolver. And so this is a function that takes four parameters, parent, which I'm going to say is any, args, which is any, context, any, and info. And it returns a promise. Uh, and anything back from that promise. But it can also return pretty much anything. So if it can return anything or a promise, we should just say it returns anything. Now, context is not going to change per each resolver, so we could actually specify exactly what context we expect. But right now, we don't have a context, so I'm going to just keep it as any. So the next thing what I want to do is create a type for the resolver map. And this is going to be an interface. So that's this thing right here. And notice how this thing works. It's an object, and this object has keys. Query, subscription, mutation, and pretty much anything else. But the notes are all strings, and they map to an object. And this object has string keys and then resolvers. So that's what we're going to do over here is create a type for that. So a key, which is a string, which goes to an object, which has string keys, and then resolver. So now over here I can set my type. So now that I told it was a resolver map, we didn't use the types, but now I don't have to explicitly specify the types for each one. Okay, cool. Now let's get started with type arm. So how would I go ahead and fetch a single user? The way I like to do it is to just reference the entity itself. So I can import the user entity and then say user.findAll. But to do that, I have to turn this guy, not turn it, but extend base entity. So now that I've extended this, what I can do over here is say user and go ahead and import it from the entity and say find. Now I could find by IDs, find one by ID. And when this is exactly what we want, right? So I'm going to say destructure my args, get an ID from it, say ID. And I don't need that, and I don't need these two fields. So cool. Now, how would we do users? Just like how we did with this one, we keep acts. We, we tell it we want to look at the users table, right? That's basically what we're doing with looking at this entity and doing dot on it. So find, and I can just say find, right? And I don't have to specify anything else because in this case, I just want to grab them all. That's what this is doing right here. And actually, we don't need any parameters to that. So let's add mutations now. Now, create is actually kind of interesting with type warm. So create user, um, we're going to get args, which is going to be all of our parameters. Now, usually, you know, you might expect it might be user.create, and you just pass in the args like that. 
which you would be correct, but this does not work how you would expect. This does not actually create the object in the database. All it does is create an object. So now we have an object called user. To actually create in the database, you have to say user.save. So that's how you would create a user right there. Now we could chain these together, right? So I could say get rid of that and create and save it all in one step. So now we're taking the arguments that we get and then just saving it. All right, so let's update a user. Now, I didn't specify an ID, but I really should specify an ID from this. So ID int. This is how we know um, which ID to update. So I could say ID dot 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 args, and then I could say user dot update. And I'm expecting a boolean back from this, so I could just say try catch. And if I get any errors, we'll console log the error, and then we'll just return false. Otherwise, return true, and then inside the try, we'll just go ahead and update. So user.update. Now for us, we can update by any field, but I want to update by the ID. And then here you specify any kind of arguments that you want to change. And you'll notice how fast and easy this is to do each CRUD operation. And delete user is going to be the same thing. And I'm just going to copy this. And something I forgot to mention, delete user, user.create. So real quick. I'm just going to give it a different name. When we were doing this, and I had const user, this user right here does not have an ID. If we look, we primary, this is our primary column that's automatically uh, generated. And that's generated by the database. Let's just comment that out for now. So when I do user.create, I told you it didn't actually create in the database yet. So it doesn't have an ID yet. But when I call user.save, and by the way, I actually don't think what we have up here will work, because um, I don't know what user.save, oh wait, it does work. I didn't know if save returned an actual user, and it does, that's good. But when we actually call save here, it will insert the ID and update the object for us. So after this, so user.id would not exist here, but it exists here. And just after saving it. Okay. I just want to mention that. All right, so delete user, user. I think it's called remove by ID, perfect. And this, we don't actually need any arguments other than that. Now, one thing I'm bummed about is the other one you saw, user.remove, just regular. Um, there's one thing I don't really like about it, but I'll talk about that in a second. I want to actually see if what we just did works. So I'm going to run npm start, and then I'll boot up our server. And now we can go ahead and create some things in our database. So come over here to localhost 4000, we can boot up GraphQL Playground, and first thing I'm gonna do is create a user. First name is gonna be Bob, last name is also gonna, or it's gonna be Bob2. What else do we need? Age, five years old. Just kidding, he's gonna be 50 now. Email bob at bob.com. Now, I want a user back. I want to see his ID, his email. You know what? I want to see all his fields. So, bam, we create a user, and we can see. Now, if I were to do this again, we should get an error. Awesome. Tells us duplicate key. Um, this is because we, let's look at the type. We said unique on the email field. Okay, so let's query our user. 
So I could get the ID of one, and I could say ID and first name, cool. Or I could get all the users, which is just him, but you'll notice it's now an array. We could try updating the user. So his first name is now gonna be Ralph. True, it worked. So now if I get user's first name, I should see one with Ralph, we do. And now let's delete him. That worked. This should be empty now, and it is. So all our operations, that's how you do CRUD operations in type ORM. Now, there's other ways to do these, right? Because it's not possible to do everything with just these. This is basically your basic example of like taking an ID and updating. But sometimes you might wanna update by other fields. So that's when you would use remove, for example. And it's not user, it's user. But one thing I was really disappointed about is here's you specify how you want to remove, right? So for example, I might want to remove by the email is equal to hello. And what doesn't it like? Uh, object may specify unknown property on base. Can I not delete by the email? I thought I was able to. All right, let's look at the type of this. Okay, it's expecting remove. Okay, it's expecting a object type entity. What else is on the user? Email, first name. I guess none of these fields work. That's weird. I thought I've done this before where you could remove. I guess remove. Like, I guess I would have to use it up here when I have a user and I actually remove him. But what I was gonna say is, let's say one of these things doesn't work. Like for example, you saw me attempting to delete by an email, but it wouldn't let me. With type ORM, they can also have a query builder. So let's take a look at this. So this is how I might delete a user. So get connection is not currently. And let's make this async. That's something I should have been awaiting. By the way, all these return promises. So make sure you await them like that. Okay. So get connection. I'm going to import that from type ORM. Uh, auto imported. So here I specify I want to delete. You need to tell it from which entity. Um, so I could say user from anywhere else and you notice this is where I specify I want to delete by ID now I can do and I might want to delete by the email equal to email and I might want to look for another field like email is equal to bob at bob.com right or I might want to do I like and you you have a string here that can do anything the database can right but what's nice about this is you can actually conditionally create this so for example I could say const delete query is equal to this as long as I don't call execute I can keep adding things so I might want to say if some condition like ID is equal to 5 then I want to say delete query I can say and where and what that does is it adds an and onto this so I might want to say and I'm just gonna comment this out so we're deleting let's delete by ID and if the ID is one because that's the only ID we have I want to look for email is equal to uh, email email bob at bob.com okay and if you open this up it'll actually show you um, the queries that are getting run 
So if I go here, history, um, I want to create a user. All right, we got user and his ID is three. So if I try deleting a user with an ID that is not uh, one, so delete user ID is two, for example. Oh, we don't have logging on. I wanted to show you guys logging. So let's turn it on, restart. It's nicely color coded, which I really like. And let's delete. So here's us deleting a user. And I don't see the delete. I'll turn it again. Oh, that's sad. For some reason, the delete's not showing up. Oh, that's why we never call execute. So after you do this here, make sure you call execute at the end delete query.execute and I'm going to await that. All right, so now we should actually execute a delete query. Bam. And now you see delete, but notice you don't see the email part. But if I do email 1 or sorry, id 1, we now have an additional and. So this query builder I I liked when I want to conditionally kind of make um, queries or uh, deleting things and this works for not just delete but update insert and select so take a look at the query builder it's pretty nice for doing these CRUD operations as well because sometimes these functions will not work just the user dot update by ID stuff but one nice thing and you know what, we'll probably get to that in a different video you can actually add methods on to this user class and call them so that's another type of doing it but that's it for this video guys that's some of the crud operations that you can do let's go ahead and comment this out and keep what we had before uh, yeah I think next we'll get into how to do relationships with this so many to many and that sort of thing that's it for this video guys thanks for watching